and it's time to look at digital to analog conversion on our Arduino Uno. So first we're going to take a look at the analog write function. Now the important thing to remember is that on most Arduino boards we don't have a true analog output. There are some that do, but your average board, you know, like a uh, an Uno or a Mega, they have sort of a pseudo analog output. And this is achieved through a pulse width modulated uh, rectangular wave. This works for some kinds of loads. This works for LEDs and motors and things like that. This is not going to work um, for, let's say, creating audio without some further processing. Okay, basically what ends up happening is we produce a square wave with a variable duty cycle. So the analog write function takes two arguments. The output pin that you want to write to and then a duty cycle value. So the duty cycle is going to be a value from 0 to 255, right, an 8-bit value. So 0 basically means off, and 255 means full on, and then values in between give us percentages. So what we'll actually wind up with is the square wave at about 490 hertz that the on and off times keep varying back and forth, depending on what we write for a value. Okay, now, what we need to look at, just so you can understand what's going on here, is some oscilloscope traces. Okay, so I put a little note in here, think area under the curve. So I've got two traces here, a red and a blue. So the red looks like a nice sort of square wave. It does, in fact, have a duty cycle of just a little over 50%, meaning the high time is about half of the total cycle time. The blue uh, has a duty cycle of about 39%. So in other words, this high time is only 39% of the total on time, right? The red and the blue have the same frequency. Okay, but as I said, the um, width of the high time, that's the duty cycle, can be varied. So if you throw in a value like 250, this high time is going to be you know, really, really big very little low time. If you put in a value like 7, the high time is really short, and it's mostly off time. Now, if you take something like um, a DC motor, it will respond to this area under the curve. In other words, it's going to uh, rotate faster with the red than the blue. If you were looking at something like an LED, your eye will basically integrate the brightness um, over this time span. And in the red waveform, that'll actually look brighter than the blue waveform. Even though it goes fully on, fully off, it would be flashing so fast that you wouldn't, in fact, see individual flashes. Your eye would just sort of integrate that, um, and you get an average value of the brightness. Now, if we took something that was dynamic, like a sine wave, here's a nice red sine wave, we can create a pulse width modulated signal just by running a comparator with a triangle wave. So um, wherever the signal, wherever the sine wave is bigger, we get a high output. Wherever it's smaller, we get a low output. But notice what's happening here, right? When the signal is large, we get big fat pulses. When the signal is small, we get really thin pulses. So if you think of averaging this, right? Big fat pulses, you're going to get a big signal. Skinny little pulses, you're going to get a small signal. So in fact, it's approximating our sine wave. Um, in the audio world, this is how you would make a Class D power amplifier. Okay, let's take a look at the analog write function itself. It's a fairly straightforward uh, function. Again, simplified, cleaned up here a little bit for our Uno. Um, so we specify the pin that we want. And remember, only certain pins have this capability. If you look on the uh, board, it'll have a little notation next to the pin that it has analog output capability. And then we give it the value, again, 0 to 255. So the first thing that happens is we call pin mode. Got to force this to output mode. If the value is 0, well, just turn the darn thing off, right? We do a digital write low. If it's 255, then we want it on fully. So same thing, we call it digital write. So for any other value, 1 to 254, we need to make sure that we have, in fact, the capacity that this, this pin is hooked up to a timer counter. 
So the first thing we have to do is translate the pin to see if it's on a timer, right? So this is this value. We've seen this before, this pin to timer uh, kind of construct. So this gives us back a value. Um, a couple of cases here, timer 0a. All right, if that's what it's on, we do this uh, bit set TCCR0A. This is a timer counter control register, and this is just setting a particular bit for an operational mode. We'll look at timer counters closer um, a little bit down the road, but in any case, this is an output compare register. We simply uh, throw a value, an 8-bit value in here, which happens to be val, the very thing that we're trying to set the duty cycle for. And essentially what ends up happening is this timer is going to count from 0 to 255, and it's going to compare against this value, and the timer changes, um, changes state when it reaches this. So that's how we're going to set the, uh, the width of that high pulse um, on the square wave. All right? Um, and we just continue on with this, right? Timer 0B, same kind of thing, right? So it, um, there are two timers per, right? There's a 0, 1, 2, 3, but there's an A and B half. So it's a similar kind of thing. Um, and we just continue this for however many timers we have. In the case of the Uno, there's timer 0, timer 1, and timer 2. Right? Other, other boards have more timers, you know, like a Mega. So um, that's what we end up doing there. If it turns out that we select a pin, right, we specify a pin that doesn't have um, uh, a timer multiplex to it, in other words, we get this case not on timer, all we can really do is uh, you know, treat it as a digital output, a high and low. So if it's more than halfway, it gets high. If it's less than halfway, it gets low. And that's the end of it. Okay, so it's um, not true analog signal. It's this sort of um, kind of area under the curve modified pseudo analog output. Although, as I said, there are some um, Arduino boards that do have true analog output. Okay, so we make a note here on the on the due that uh, this does have two outputs, DAC0 and DAC1, that are true digital analog converters. Okay. All right, looking good.